Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Now in today's lesson, what we're gonna be talking about is elemental breakpoints or how you can actually go about making your website responsive. Now I was directly asked the other day whether I could put this video together. So very recently, Elemental for WordPress has released the opportunity for you to create additional breakpoints on your website, okay? Previously, they just have three different breakpoints for mobile, desktop, and tablet. Now you have around seven, okay? So what we're gonna be discussing on screen is one, how you go about activating these, how you go about editing them, and how you can go about adding additional breakpoints for your site. I'll also talk to you a little bit about how breakpoints work within Elementor, and more importantly, how your styles cascade either upwards or downwards, depending on the media query or the breakpoint that you're working within. So before we get into this, please do hit subscribe please do hit the bell notification too and you're gonna be notified of all future releases. Also, I'd really like it if you could let me know down in the comments whether you are making use of the new Elementor Breakpoints feature as of yet. Cool, now without further ado, let's jump on the screen. Okay, cool, so we are here, we've logged into WordPress, we're currently at the dashboard. Now I've just logged into my own personal website here, so this is the agency website. Now, in order to use breakpoints or the variety of breakpoints that are now available in Elementor. Originally, we just had three breakpoints, which was mobile, desktop, and tablet. Now we have the opportunity to, to create some additional scales and additional points in which our content collapses. So to make sure that you've got this available on your site, what we need to do is just double check. We're gonna to go to Elementor and then hit settings. And then from here, if you go to experiments, so, it might be that with your version of Elemental that you're running, the breakpoints might still be considered an experiment and it not be turned on by default. So if we just scroll down, there we go. So we've got additional custom breakpoints. So this is currently on. So by default, ours is on, which is great. What you wanna do is make sure that if it's not on, so if it's looking like this one in line font icons, then that means it's off you wanna make sure that it's green. So you, you would then wanna switch that to active. Okay, if it's not green. And once that's done, what you wanna do is scroll down and hit save. Okay. Now we will have the opportunity to create extra breakpoints within our website now. So to do this, we need to go visit an individual page. So let's just visit the home page in this instance. And we're gonna edit it with Elementor. All right, cool. So from here, let me just pop that out of the way. So in Elementor, we have the opportunity to see what our content looks like on a variety of, of devices. I've already said mobile, tablet, and desktop. Now it takes a desktop first approach. I believe everything that you design in the browser is done so via the desktop. And then the styles tend to just cascade down depending on the device. So let's hit this responsive mode icon down in the bottom corner. And you'll see here, we've got those three different devices. We've got desktop, tablet, and mobile. That's great. So we can click each of these and you can see how the content collapses in, in this instance. Okay, so it's inheriting all of our styles from our desktop and it is bringing them down. So if we are on desktop and we wanted to make changes to this piece, for example, we would click inside there. We'll have our styling options over on the left-hand side. If we hit typography, you can see that any changes that we make here is being changed to the desktop size. We could then switch that to tablet and any changes that we make is going to apply to the tablet, right? And then if we switch that to mobile, you can see that it's inherited the size from the tablet and it, it's cascaded down. So that's essentially what cascading means. It will take your styles from your desktop and it will cascade it down to either your tablet or your mobile. Right, so that hopefully clarifies that. Now I'm just gonna replace this like so. Cool, so how do we get some additional breakpoints? What we wanna do is head over to our manage breakpoints cog over on the top right. Now, actually, I didn't see this initially. I had to ask, ask a friend to help me here. Um, but what you wanna do is click that toggle and then over on the left-hand side, you're gonna see some additional breakpoint settings. Now, this is really cool because this now allows us to create some additional responsive points depending on what device you're working with. So in order to add some breakpoints, you can see under the active breakpoints section that we've got mobile and tablet already activated, and they are these two here. Desktop will always stay. We can't, we can't remove that. 
or essentially we don't need to add it uh, because we are using a desktop first approach and the styles are cascading down to smaller devices. So what we want to do is click the plus and you'll see all of the extra options that we've got here. So we've got mobile extra, we've got tablet extra, laptop and widescreen. Now the two mobile and tablet are a slightly darker shade because they're already active. So we could hit mobile extra, we could hit tablet extra. So just adding those two, for example, you can see that we've got our breakpoint settings being applied down below. All right, and one question that I got asked the other day was, how do we know what width of pixels do we assign to each breakpoint? Well, luckily, this just takes care of it for us. So we'll automatically assign the best practice of width for each of those devices. Okay, so let's add a few more. Cool, and you can see that from on mobile, from 767 down, that's gonna be considered the mobile device. Uh, anything above that is gonna be extra mobile. Tablet is 1024, so 120, uh, 1024 pixels wide. Then now uh, we've got laptop, let me just move that. And then we've got a uh, wide screen. Okay, so that's a new one. That's 2,400 pixels wide, which is really, really wide, guys. All right, so to see what these look like and how this transitions over to the uh, canvas, what we're gonna do is just hit update. All right, and it's gonna ask for Elementor to reload. That is absolutely fine. So let's just hit reload now. Cool, so here we are back at our main editor. What you wanna do is hit responsive down on the left-hand side again. Cool, and you can now see how many additional devices that we've got. So originally we just had the three. We've now got seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we've now got seven. And by default, we're still relying on a desktop. All right, so what's gonna happen now is the styles that are applied to desktop, they are going to cascade down to these smaller devices. But this device that we've got here, widescreen, it's going to cascade upwards. Okay, so any styles that you apply to the desktop, will be applied also to the widescreen. But this has just given us an opportunity here. So after clicking widescreen, you can see how wide this is, like this is super wide. But it does give us an opportunity to make things bigger if we want to. So we can we could potentially, you know, increase the size of our main container. So we could, you know, there we go, that's a 2000 width. So that's increased the size there. That will only apply to the, the super widescreen it's not going to apply to our desktop. Okay, so you can see how it, the styles had cascaded up. We've changed them specifically for this width. And we can do so the same for our laptop, our extra tablet size that we have now. So you, you can see that there is a break here, which I, I'm going to have to go and fix. And then we've got tablet, mobile extra and mobile. Okay, so tons of different styles available for multiple devices that we now have available. Okay, so we've got seven seven devices, seven responsive widths that we can code for. So that's awesome. So that's how you go about creating breakpoints in Elemental. So there you go, guys. Hopefully you found that valuable. You now understand how you could activate breakpoints within your Elemental website if they're not already there, and also how you can actually add and remove additional breakpoints for your website and make changes depending on the breakpoint or the device that you wanna be styling for. As I said earlier, please do let me know down in the comments whether you are making use of this feature. Yeah, I know some people are aware of it, other people are not quite aware of it. So yeah, I'd love to hear more about that. If you have found this valuable, please do give it a thumbs up. I'd really, really appreciate that. Also hit subscribe and the bell notification too, and you're gonna be notified of all future releases on this channel. Now there is an end screen coming up with more valuable content for you. So please do stick around and check that out. That's it for me today, guys, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.